Here's your daily updates. Newsman Dennis Daly offers his take on the events of the day in another daily video blog. Hi and thanks again, everybody. There have been a lot of tributes to the late Dr. Martin Luther King on this, his official holiday. But my memories of what happened back then are not a meeting with Dr. King, but what happened the night Martin Luther King was assassinated. I only now, in retrospect, having done a lot of research, realize just what was going on in my home state of Indiana at that time. The 1968 primary, particularly the Democratic primary, was hotly contested, and Senator Robert Kennedy had flown into Indianapolis that day and addressed a group at a rally that night. And it was Kennedy's reaction to Dr. King's assassination that really not only changed the course of that primary, but gave a whole new life to some of Kennedy's inner feelings. Robert Kennedy was indeed a liberal, following in the footsteps of his assassinated brother John, but maybe farther toward the left than his brother. But the question was, how strong could Robert Kennedy express his feelings in the conservative state of Indiana without being perceived as a radical? It was the night Dr. King was assassinated that Robert Kennedy became so angry that he once told a follower he was willing to lose the nomination if he spoke directly and spoke the truth. That night I was in the audience covering his address. He said that he was so filled with hate and disgust at the injustice of the assassination that he was going to move on with compassion and love. Later, at a meeting at the Indiana University Medical Center, a student asked Kennedy who was going to pay for all the social reforms. He looked at the white student and said, You are. I don't see many black faces here. Kennedy said, When I look around the room, I realize that I don't see people from the slums here or Indian reservations. There is a struggle going on in Vietnam and poor blacks are dying there. You are the privileged class, he told those mostly white medical students. He said something had to be done to help the American Negro and the American Indian and poor whites. Unfortunately, Robert Kennedy would not live long enough to fulfill his desires. In later years, many around Kennedy would write that it was his very strong statements in Indianapolis and at the IU Medical Center that made a lot of people worry about him suddenly. Was he too strong in what he was saying? Well, we may never know, but I thought you might enjoy that little story about what happened the night Dr. King died. I'm Dennis Daly with your daily news update.